so um, hello. Um, uh, my name is uh, Michael Stahl and I work for Red Hat and uh, this talk is about um, automated testing in the LibreOffice project. Louder? Louder. Oh. Uh, okay, um, so uh, a bit of an uh, overview. So first a uh, little bit of uh, introduction about um, uh, what the topic is and the uh, second part um, is uh, about uh, all of the various different kind of tests that um, um, developers um, can run every day uh, on every build to uh, to check that they do not add new regression bugs. And then at the end we will have a short look at some uh, even uh, more obscure tests. So um, why automated testing? So uh, in LibreOffice we have uh, in every release something like on the order of 10,000 uh, commits and uh, we change uh, something like uh, a million lines of code every release. And uh, the obvious question is um, if we do that many changes uh, how do we avoid uh, introducing uh, new bugs, introducing regressions? And a, a substantial part of our uh, overall strategy to avoid that is to do uh, automated mm -hmm. testing. So uh, basically our goal is that the developers um, find uh, any potential bug that they introduce before they push um, their uh, uh, buggy changes uh, to the uh, repository and so uh, a part of that is that um, also the developers also um, have to be able and willing to write the uh, tests themselves. So uh, we can avoid the, uh, the, the worst case scenario here because we don't really have a test organization or anything like that. So um, the uh, next question then is what requirements do we have? for tests. So um, for unit tests, the first requirement uh, is that we want to be able to use standard uh, unit test libraries. Um, we want to use uh, uh, standard libraries that um, developers may already be familiar, uh, even if they uh, haven't contributed to LibreOffice before. And we um, also want to be able to run all of the uh, tests as part of the standard build. We don't want any uh, developers to have to learn how to use any extra uh, uh, tool with a uh, complicated UI or whatever to run the test. The developer has to be able to, uh, to, to just do a make check and then all of the tests run automatically. And if the test, uh, if the tests are all successful, then they don't produce any output. And if they, uh, if any test fails, then it should be very obvious um, um, what exactly has failed. So uh, the next requirement is um, we want to have reliable tests. So um, it's not very useful to have tests that fail randomly 1% of the time when you run them because um, that will then uh, train developers to avoid running the test and to not trust the result of the test and that's obviously a, a bad scenario that we want to avoid. Also the tests have to run uh, quickly so we don't want developers to wait uh, 10 hours for the test result because then they won't run them every day. And the next requirement is that we uh, want to have a good defect localization from, the, uh, from test failure. So if a test fails, it should be relatively obvious um, what exactly has failed and um, where the code in the uh, office code uh, is exactly that was uh, that uh, um, uh, that uh, has triggered the failure and um, 
um, where to look for the bug effectively that was introduced. And the last requirement that we have is that we want um, the test to be uh, debuggable if it fails. So it should be easy to get the test to run inside of a debugger and uh, so that the developer can, can easily find, uh, investigate and find out uh, what, what uh, problem uh, was introduced. So now uh, we continue with the various different kinds of tests uh, that we have currently. And the um, first category of, of tests is uh, the CPP unit tests. Uh, these are implemented in C++ and they use the standard CPP unit library. Um, and uh, actually, currently, this uh, library, CPP unit, is maintained by uh, Markus Mohat, who uh, is um, a very prolific uh, LibreOffice uh, contributor and has actually um, written uh, large numbers of unit tests with CP CPP unit and has uh, um, also written various uh, different, uh, basically, uh, frameworks for, for, for writing more tests. So, um, uh, huge achievement there. And uh, these uh, tests run in the same process, uh, in process. So basically, you have a single process that executes both the test code and the, um, the office code that is being tested. And that makes uh, the tests uh, easier to debug. So we have various different kinds of CPP on the tests. And um, so basically, at, at the top level categorization, we have a unit tests. The, the simplest ones are a simple, a simple test for a single, a single C++ uh, class. And then we have uh, tests that uh, test a single uh, UNO component uh, via its uh, API. And then um, at a bit of a higher level, we have uh, integration tests, those tests uh, test um, several components together or uh, maybe an entire application like writer. And there are many different kinds of these. I uh, couldn't possibly list them all. And uh, there are some, some particular interesting kinds like we have these uh, um, filter crash tests which are a, a bit notorious. Um, because what they do is they essentially load uh, a bunch of uh, test documents. And uh, then we check if we didn't crash loading them. And um, these are all documents that um, were uh, created to demonstrate previous security issues. The problem with that is that various antivirus products will then uh, complain about these files, so we actually store them encrypted in the Git repository and decrypt them during testing. And uh, that is why you should uh, disable um, uh, uh, antivirus uh, products when, w during a build, because the, they uh, cause spurious uh, build failures, effectively. Or you can use a configure option to disable these tests. Um, and yeah, filter tests I will talk about in a bit. And then at uh, the highest level, we have a, a whole system test effectively, that is the smoke test, um, which is uh, only nominally a CPP unit test because the actual uh, test code is, is loaded from a document and is actually a basic macros. And this test does a bit of a very, uh, uh, high-level stuff like it also installs an uh, extension and whatnot. And so now let's have a look a bit at the filter tests. We we, uh, we have lots and lots of these, and they basically all work in the same way. Um, they import a test file, and then they check that some property in the in the file was uh, imported correctly. And um, then they export the file again and uh, import it again. And then uh, we check the same properties again to check that they were round-tripped uh, correctly. Um, 
and we can also with these tests um, validate that the written files are um, a valid ODF or valid um, OXML uh, files uh, if you install these uh, extra uh, validators. Um, yes, we do have uh, we do have a Tinder box that uses the uh, validation. So uh, yes, you you will you will get a mail the next day. I think it's not. I think it's not a fast Tinder box. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, so uh, this is a, a very confusing graph. Um, uh, where I've uh, tried to to investigate um, uh, how, uh, yeah, basically the, the story here is this CPP unit uh, tests are a growth industry. Um, we have um, the, the the blue line in the in the chart is the number of make files, um, and you can invoke every one of these uh, individually if you, uh, for example, have to debug one of these tests. And uh, the blue line uses the scale on the right. So uh, we have currently more than 200 uh, make files. And then the smaller bars, uh, the bars use the scale on the left. And the uh, smaller bars are the number of uh, CPP unit test functions. And the larger bars are the number of uh, individual assertions, so each assertion checks one particular uh, condition. So um, as you can see, we, uh, we uh, had some uh, tests already initially in 3.3, but we, we add lots and lots of these uh, tests over, t over time. So the next category of tests is the uh, JUnit tests. And these are, uh, not surprisingly, implemented in Java. And they use the uh, Java uh, standard testing library, which is JUnit. So um, I've, I found two different uh, kinds of these tests. Uh, basically, um, one of them is uh, simply unit tests uh, for the uh, UNO Java language uh, binding. And these uh, actually run uh, in process. And then we have um, the so-called uh, complex tests, which um, actually run out of process. How does that work? Um, the test code, uh, so basically to run the test, um, uh, we, we invoke Java with the uh, JUnit um, tests, and then that launches a separate uh, S-Office process that is uh, a whole uh, LibreOffice instance and sets up a, a remote uh, UNO uh, protocol communication uh, between the uh, Java side and the uh, Office side. And then uh, the, uh, the uh, test function calls go over the uh, remote connection and uh, the result values uh, go back. and. Um, there are two different uh, sub kinds of uh, sub uh, categories of the complex tests. So um, you have some some of them. A lot of them uh, test a single component. So basically, these are sort of uh, like unit tests. And then there are also um, a few that um, test an entire application and uh, create lots of uh, different uh, things and test them together. So, um, how? Uh, wh what is the uh, growth situation with the JUnit tests? As you can see, um, actually in the beginning, uh, from 3.3 3 .3 to 3.5, that is a measurement error. Because, uh, um, as it turns out, we didn't uh, actually uh, write new tests there. Uh, but the tests were previously in some custom test framework, and they were converted to JUnit. So, but since then, um, there were not very many of these tests added. So it's basically, uh, more or less, it stays uh, constant. So, 
So the, the next category of tests is the uh, UNO API tests, and uh, these are um, very much uh, unloved by developers. Um, they are also, uh, they live in the Q, QA dev OOO module. Um, these are also implemented in Java, but they do not use JUnit. They use a custom testing framework. And they also use, um, they, they run out of process via the uh, remote uh, UNO protocol. And these tests are very notorious for uh, having a very obscure uh, test code uh, where it's hard to figure out where, uh, where um, the actual uh, test code lives that is being executed and how the test environment has been set up, set up for a particular test and so on. And also another problem these tests suffer from is that they are essentially a black box uh, tests for uh, written generically against um, a, a UNO interface and uh, they, so they are not very thorough tests, and um, they do not uh, take specifics of a particular Im implementation uh, into account. So, and uh, all of these are essentially uni unit tests of a single uh, UNO component. So, and uh, how does the, um, the growth look like basically there is no growth. Uh, nobody is is adding new tests here. Um, um, yeah, actually the the numbers here are not really comparable to the the other uh, graphs. Uh, that's why I've uh, used different colors because um, it's actually because um, there are several mechanisms to disable these tests and some of them are disabled, so it's very hard to, to find out statically which of these are actually run and which are disabled. Uh, so I actually grabbed uh, through the log file to, to generate this data. So, um, and that, uh, that what is being plotted here is the actual um, unit interfaces that are being tested and the actual number of you know, uh, uh, components that are being tested. So, but what you can see is that the number is essentially constant. The only uh, change there at the end is that somebody split up the, the make files. And that was only done to, to um, make the test run faster, essentially. So uh, the last kind of, of tests that we have are the Python tests. And uh, these are implemented in uh, Python, and the, they use um, the standard uh, one, uh, I'm not sure if it's the standard, but a standard uh, library for uh, testing in Python that is called uh, unit test. And uh, these tests uh, actually run in process and um, basically uh, uh, they are a very recent addition and, um, and uh, mostly the work of David Ostrovsky. So uh, we have uh, two different uh, uh, kinds of these. So uh, for the PyUNO uh, language binding, there are some uh, unit tests and then we have um, uh, also, unit tests for basically uh, various uh, things in Writer that are, uh, yeah, essentially similar to the um, to the same thing done in JUnit, uh, just in Python. So. Um, and we don't actually have many of them because, uh, one, um, yeah, they are, they are relatively uh, recent. The first one was added in 4.1, and I'm not actually sure what the things uh, I found in earlier releases <coughs> actually are. Uh, should investigate that, I guess. Um, and yeah, we, ha we currently have uh, eight make files for these, and. Uh, yeah, le less than 50 test functions, so uh, really not all that much. So 
So um, now we uh, have seen the four different uh, kinds of tests, and uh, this is just a bit of an uh, overview, so uh, you can um, quickly uh, compare the uh, how many of each we have relatively. So uh, with the caveat that the UNA AP interface is, is uh, somewhat different measurement, but uh, yeah. Um, so what you can clearly see is that we have more CPP unit tests than everything else combined, and yeah. So, um, but we we still have relatively many of these uh, UNO API interface tests. So uh, now uh, a very interesting question is, uh, now that we have seen these uh, different kinds of tests, how, how well or badly do they uh, meet the requirements that we have um, seen? So uh, first uh, I should mention the, the first row is the historic um, VCL test tool. And um, <laughs> as you can see from, from, from uh, how well or how badly it meets our requirements, um, we actually removed uh, this um, test infrastructure uh, some several years ago, very early in the project. And yeah, this uh, basically is an explanation why. Um, so, and uh, now for the requirements. So basically, um, Except for the UNA API test, every um, a kind of test uses the uh, uses a standard testing library, and we can run uh, everything with make check, so that's nice. And so the basically our uh, uh, CPP unit tests that are actual unit tests are sort of the uh, best case for the project because uh, they are um, reliable they, because they test only a very small unit and they run very quickly and if, so, if uh, one of these fails then you know very well where you need to investigate because uh, uh, there is, uh, the, the unit that is being tested is very small and they are also debuggable. We have um, uh, infrastructure in the uh, build system to quickly um, run a single test inside of GDB or, inside, uh, or within uh, Visual Studio. So that is working nicely. And sort of at the other end of the scale for CPP unit tests, we have the filter tests, which, um, uh, well, they have also the advantage. Uh, they are uh, easily debuggable and they are fast. But uh, there have been some issues with the reliability of these tests. So what can happen is that you write a test and it runs successfully on Linux and it fails for unknown reasons on Windows or it fails on Mac or it fails on, uh, it runs successfully on one Windows Tinder box and it fails on a different Windows Tinder box or it uh, sometimes um, randomly fails. Uh, we, we, we've seen uh, cases like this and um, yeah, the, basically the problem here, and also uh, the reason for the poor defect lo localization of these tests, is that uh, the, the unit they are, or, uh, they are testing is too much, so um, too big. Uh, um, when importing a file, the data passes through uh, various different layers. In, for example, for an RTF file, it uh, goes through an RTF tokenizer, then through the domain mapper, then through writer's UNO you know, uh, API implementation, then it ends up in the writer core. And uh, if something goes wrong anywhere, you don't know where exactly it went wrong. And mm -hmm. so debugging a test failure does take some time, and that's not really ideal. Um, yeah, so the next uh, category is the uh, complex uh, JUnit tests. And yeah, these are also quite fast. And these, if they are really unit tests, then they provide good defect lo localization when they fail. Uh, but um, they, are, they also have problems with re reliability, but these are different problems here. Um, basically, they, uh, these problems come from the uh, out-of-process na nature of these tests because uh, they use uh, remote uh, UNO calls. Um, 
they um, run into the problem that the um, implementation in uh, in LibreOffice itself is uh, has uh, lots and lots of uh, threading issues, and so you can get um, rather uh, non-deterministic uh, results at times, and yeah, that may lead to spurious uh, test failures. And yeah, also the auto process nature makes them very difficult to debug because, well, you have two processes. So where do you attach your debugger? You need two debuggers. And uh, yeah, it's um, um, complicated. And so the next category is the uh, Unit API tests. And these, um, in addition to the uh, reliability uh, problems that the complex tests have, these uh, have some more problems, um, especially some of the um, tests that are for accessibility-related interfaces um, are notorious for spurious um, failures that nobody has been able to uh, track down yet. But um, we still we we haven't deleted these tests because they uh, they are, for many things they are the only tests that we have so um, we don't want to give up the coverage there and it used to be that these tests were also quite full of delays and wait statements um, but I think somebody has recently um, converted all of those with the new VCL main loop. Um, uh, improvements so that they wait uh, for idle, and so they should be uh, running faster nowadays, although I haven't uh, measured it. And um, also, when it comes to defect localizations, uh, these are not good because uh, of the obscure test code. So um, if you have a test failure, then um, it's not easy to find out um, where the actual test code that has failed even lives. And so that's another problem. Um, then for the Python tests, um, so far they have proved to be reliable, but since we have only very few of them now, it's, um, I wouldn't uh, trust that. So we don't really know if they, uh, if we had as many as we have the other categories, if they would still be re re reliable. Um, but yeah, in terms of performance, they are good and they provide good defect localization. And if, when it comes to debuggability, they are somewhat between the um, uh, CPP unit tests and the J unit tests because the good thing is that they run in the same process and um, the bad thing is that you have two different languages. You have the test written in Python and the implementation that is being tested is written in C++. So that creates a bit of a problem. And, um, but uh, GDB at least has uh, a couple of uh, interesting um, um, help us that allow you to print the Python backtrace and that sort of thing uh, while you are debugging. Um, but I don't think that an equivalent for Visual Studio exists. So yeah, it's not ideal. OK, so much for the requirements. Uh, now a bit of a short aside. Um, one thing that uh, actually helps with the tests is um, using, just using assertions in the product code. Uh, if you want to uh, check that some, uh, uh, the state you're in is, is, is actually valid and that sort of thing and uh, input parameters are valid. Um, because uh, all of these assertions, mm, if they fail, they will call abort and that will crash your test process, and uh, that is uh, then effectively a test failure. So, um, but the problem with that is, of course, that um, if, if the test hasn't been specifically written to exercise this part of the code, then you don't actually necessarily um, know uh, where, the, where the problem is going to be. So, um, 
And yeah, assertions, we have basically started uh, with that uh, in 3.4, 3.5, something like that. And we have added quite a lot of them over time. So it's good to see that. So uh, now that we have all these tests, uh, it would be interesting to know uh, how good the uh, the coverage of the test is. So uh, how much of the code is being uh, executed uh, during the test. And in order to do that, we use uh, special builds with um, GCC options that do um, instrumentation for test coverage. And then we um, run uh, this uh, Elkov tool which uh, creates some nice uh, web pages out of the resulting data. And uh, that is, uh, I think it's run daily or maybe weekly, I'm not sure. Oh, daily. daily, okay. And uh, you can go to this uh, elkov.libreoffice.org uh, web page and uh, look at the nice results and see what areas are being tested and which not. And I think all of this is uh, thanks to uh, Martin Hurst, who um, did the uh, scripting work and whatnot to get this up and running. So what does that look like? Um, unfortunately, I found only four historic data points for this. And uh, this looks a bit weird because um, uh, why they are not equally distant from each other is because the dates when these results um, were archived are not equally distant from each other. So, for the past um, few months, you got the daily report checkings. So, you got at least the last two, three weeks of a report. Why for that? Oh, it's in Jenkins. Yeah. I should there. have looked there. Uh, yeah, well, uh, disregard the graph. Um, uh, no, but uh, seriously, um, so w what you can see on the left scale is the number of lines of code, and um, the, the blue ones are the uh, lines that were executed during the test, and the red ones are the total lines, which are a bit more than two million. And um, yeah, it's, it's less than other figures you may have seen reported because this is uh, only the lines that have actual statements in them, not empty brace or something like that lines. And um, yeah, and the blue line is the coverage in percent. And we started out with um, like 38%. And now we are something like 42, 43%. And yeah, so the general trend is in the right direction. Uh, yeah. So the next thing I uh, wanted to just quickly mention is that in it, so that was all the tests that were, were running via make check. In addition to that, we have a bit more um, sort of complicated tests that um, we do run regularly, but um, they take a bit longer. So, you, um, so it's more of a manual process. Uh, one of them is the uh, so-called crash testing, where we import and export a huge pile of, of tens of thousands of documents. And there is a separate talk about that at this conference. And then we have a performance test which um, is using uh, CalGrant uh, to profile uh, certain things and that uh, can be uh, run by the make uh, perf check target. And this is uh, also somewhere run uh, um, uh, automatically, probably with Jenkins. And um, so you can go to this um, website. Three to or four hours. Three or four hours they take, okay. And we can, uh, you can look at this website and uh, look at the nice graphs of the results and see if we have been, uh, become slower somewhere. So, and uh, yeah, this is uh, thanks to um, Matus and Laurent, who apparently did the work there. And yeah, 
So uh, basically, that was the talk. And uh, the, the, the lesson of the talk is clear. You should all go out and write more tests, because we don't have enough coverage yet. And yeah, in, in fact, instead of listening to my uh, talk, you should have uh, uh, written a test instead. That would have been uh, vastly more useful. So uh, yeah, uh, thanks. Any questions? Question. Which of certs are we supposed to be using in the code? Because there's a cert, there's OSL cert, there's debugger cert. Um, oh, it depends. Uh, so, <laughs> um, yeah, OSL assert and uh, DBG assert are essentially deprecated. Can you come and, please? Oh, um, yeah, the, the question was is which uh, sort of assertions should be used in the code? And uh, the, the, the best way uh, to assert something is with the standard uh, C uh, assert macro. And that has the benefit that it, if the assertion fails, then it will actually abort the process. And that will, ma will mean that developers who do their debug builds with assertions enabled will notice that, and uh, they will uh, hopefully investigate it. And then there are various other legacy um, uh, assert macros like dbg assert and dbg whatever, and OSL assert and OSL ensure. And these are pretty much all deprecated. And these um, basically just print out uh, something on the standard error that assertion such and such has failed, and everybody ignores that. And it's uh, not that helpful. But um, uh, there is a use case uh, still for that sort of thing, is when you, uh, when you have some condition that you want to check, which is often an error, but you can't be sure it's an error. And then um, there is something equivalent, and that is the new uh, SAL, uh, what's it called, SAL born. And yeah, uh, so that is the non-deprecated equivalent to OSL ensure and whatnot. We're just having write uh, a plugin to convert all those uh, DBG assert to the some problem of them. with the easy hack to get rid of them is that some of them should be true asserts while some of them should be sound warrants and no compiler or no automatic or no easy hacker set out which should be which so this is a hard hack actually. If you use the check with debugging enables and CP check will warn about all the places Yeah, the issue is if you see a cell warn, you know you assume that it's uh, it's not a re not supposed to be a real assert. Whereas you, as you see an OSL ensure, you uh, you see that it's some legacy old stuff, and you have you don't uh, you know that whoever wrote that didn't think about the question. So maybe solutions to remove them altogether and reintroduce the one that makes sense. Or start by making all the assert and all the debug fail. So not I I think we are very late, so uh, I think we should stop this uh, discussion now.